Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing it. Doing it. I guess Jared wants to get on a roll here. That was that was quick. <laughs> was it? Was it quick? That was very quick here. Uh, I suppose it was. I should maybe I should slow down. It was not. We're we're still we're still in like in the pre We're still very pre seasony. In in our collegiate chaos, well, you know, it's a reflection of a reality, of course, but. Um, yeah, well, we do have well, four. We do have four top twenty-five teams fall. Um, only one of them would qualify, or one of them wouldn't qualify as chaos. But the other three will count as chaos. We'll count those yeah. as chaos, I suppose. Yeah. So, well, well, we'll start from the I guess the biggest game here, Jared. Alabama losing at home to Texas. Jared, I know you yeah. really want to say it. You really, really want to say it, Jared. Yeah. Texas is back. Y'all, Texas is back. This is, you know, I want to, let me, let me, let me caveat it a bit for how long. Um, I don't really like Oklahoma. And I don't know who else in the Big 12 is going to challenge them. So they just kind of have to not screw up from here on out. Which is, for a Sarkeesian team, that can be difficult. So they're just they're going to have to stay focused. And I think they have a pretty clear shot to the playoff from here, quite frankly. Um, now, I, I do want to throw oh Kyle's throwing the schedule in here let's take a look um Rice Bama already won Wyoming terrible Baylor terrible Kansas terrible Oklahoma okay I mean you can okay um Houston not good BYU is not as good as they were last year Kansas State we'll see um I I don't know if I'm bought in on Kansas State yet TCU is not the same TCU from last year. Iowa State's terrible. Texas Tech. Um, well, Texas Tech had a good showing this week, didn't they? Against Oregon. I don't I don't know if that's more of a um, knock on Oregon than it is. It more of a knock on Oregon than it is a benefit or a, a compliment for Texas Tech. We'll see. We'll see, though. We'll see. Yeah, but, yeah I mean, you go you go to Alabama's place here and you win you win by 10 34 to 24 here and yeah you made you made it texas made alabama at times look silly here i know on our especially pre- on the offensive good. line on the offensive yeah. line there i know we talked just a little bit about it in our previous episode but yeah alabama is struggling very similar to kind of like ohio state's offense the offensive line is struggling here the quarterback quarterback play is is okay they've had better quarterbacks in in the past here but i still i like Ohio state's quarterback better than alabama's though so i think 100 percent edge edge to Ohio state in that one though but alabama's offensive line is not not where it needs to be and there's really no excuse for alabama because they recruit much better on the offensive we wanted, line that Ohio State has. Uh, Ohio State tried to get those two offensive tackles that Bama started last night and lost. They're yes. both five-star guys. That being said, and we talked about this briefly in the um, Scarlet and Great episode, they're starting a true freshman, incredibly big, incredibly talented true freshman at left tackle, but they're still starting a true freshman at left tackle, which is... um not typically a smart idea and it definitely didn't look like a smart idea uh, against texas he he got bullied um but yeah this is and i want to say this because we're 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 gonna hype up texas and we should we should hype up texas that was an amazing win great job texas um this is one of the more taller tal I'm going to try that again, Kyle. Am I going to cut that out? No, I'm not too lazy, but I am going to try it again. Um, 
that is one of the more talent deficient Alabama teams we've seen in a very long time. Uh, the, they are incredibly young on the offensive line. Talented, but young. Uh, they don't have a they don't have a quarterback. Devin Brown would be starting for Alabama right now. OK, Devin Brown would start for Alabama right now. Um, they might try to poach him next season. They might. They might. Um, they're not. They're not. Spe- they, they don't have a typical Alabama running back. Um, it's they're they're still very talented on the defensive side. Uh, I think they still have some great talent on the defensive side, but on the offensive side, um, they don't look like Bama. And it's not just the quarterback and it's not just the offensive line, although and then that's what a lot of people are going to focus on, especially after that Texas game. But um, five sacks, five sacks in that game for Texas. Yeah. I mean, even like the center kept snapping the ball low all night low. and had a mm-hmm. I think he had one or two illegal snaps where he was snapping the ball too early. Um Sent, uh, so the center struggled. Um, so I know a lot of people, again, like like a lot of Ohio State fans are going to throw a lot of the offensive line blame on on Josh Simmons. I know a lot of Bama fans are going to be throwing a lot of the blame directly on to Caden Proctor. But those are full offensive line struggles for both Ohio State and Alabama right now. Yeah. And it all starts up front. You want to watch. You want to watch a program like Alabama crumble? Give them a lackluster offensive line. It's all it takes. It's all it takes. 3.1. 3.1 yards per rush attempt for Alabama. I mean, Texas Texas wasn't any better. They were 2.8. But the difference was that was the quarterback play. Yeah, The the difference is someone has Quinn Ewers and a better offensive line. Yeah. Yeah. Quinn Ewers had did not get sacked at all. He threw for 349 yards, three touchdowns. Ewers um, is so good in the in the pocket. In the Ewers, pocket. Ewers navigates the pocket like an NFL quarterback. The way he climbs up in through uh the rush, the way he climbs up a pocket, he he climbs the pocket like an NFL quarterback. Um He's, you know, I'm not saying he's in total NFL quarterback at this time. He's not. He's still, you know, he's still a third year guy who is the age of a second year guy. Um, He still has flaws. He's not he's not God. He's 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 just a man. But um, he's, he looks very, very good. He looks very, very good. And I know there's a lot of Ohio State fans because of the year he spent in Columbus and how how he left, which I think are mostly stories that people make up as far as, quote unquote, how he left. Yeah. Um, but. I I cheer, I don't and I don't and, and, and on the other side of that, I also don't he's only in Columbus for a few months. I don't I don't claim him the way I claim Joe Burrow, um, you know, Joe Burrow's at a Buckeye and a Tiger to me. Um, Quinn Quinn's a Longhorn, period. Um, but I still cheer for him. I like him. I cheer for him. Um, and I will up until the point that it becomes uh, a disadvantage for Ohio State for me to cheer for him. All right. Uh, the Moving on to some other games here, Jared. Texas A&M loses to Miami of Florida. Uh, what was that game? 48 to 33. Where, where it was a but, it was a home game it was a home game to Miami but it was majority Texas A and M fans. No, it just it was majority <laughs> empty. Yeah, yeah, it's yes. just typical Miami stuff. Yes, um, yes. 
Man, and ESPN does their best to like mic the crowd and make it not seem like that stadium's dead. <laughs> but it's dead. Come on. But come on. It's a, it, yeah, ESPN goes into apology mode anytime they show the stands. It's weird. Um, yeah, neither of these teams are good. I'll just say this. Miami's not... The, I watch Bama in Texas, and yes, Bama's, as I said, Bama's very talent deficient. But when I say Bama's talent deficient, I mean, by Bama standards, they're talent deficient. All right. M much like when we do Scarlet and Grade, we, you know, you you grade based off of a curve, right? Um, neither Texas A&M or Miami look good. Uh. Both of those teams should have plenty of talent on them. If we're looking at recruiting stars, there should be tons of talent on that field. But I watching that game and watching the Alabama Texas game were worlds different as far as like the quality of play on the field. Um. So yeah, we we count as a collegiate chaos. We say good win Miami, but it's not. These are just two mediocre teams with good brand names on the field, if we're being honest. Yeah. The SEC, Jared, so far through two weeks versus Power 5 opponents are 3-6. and six, And that includes 0-4 on the road. Yikes. Who, who are the wins? Who are the wins? You said 3-6? and six? Three and six. Well, they got one here. Well, is it four is not a power? Two lanes not a power five. <laughs> okay. I I don't have. Um, uh, I do not have that in front of me here. I will have to. I have to look it up. Okay. Uh, don't you don't don't worry about it. Um, if I remember correctly, I don't know if any of those wins are impressive, for what it's worth. I think Tennessee last week was Tennessee versus Virginia. I think was one. Not impressive, uh, though. That wouldn't have been last week. That would have been two weeks ago. Uh, but no, no, whenever yes. Virginia is not anything special, especially when uh, Tennessee turned around and struggled bad against Austin P. Bad against Austin P. The governors. The volunteers yeah. versus the oh, governors. Mississippi State over Arizona. Is that the crown jewel? That might be Auburn beat Cal. Uh, that's that's not better. Um, Hawaii is not a no. They are not five. So no. Two to Auburn play. Didn't Auburn have a late game last night against someone? Yeah, that, that's who it was last night. That was who it was over the weekend. It was it was Cal. Oh oh oh! oh. I misheard you. Yeah. So that was two, and then they had one. Last week, which I mentioned was the Tennessee Virginia game. Is there is Arizona is Arizona mm -hmm. the best yep. out of conference win for the SEC right now? Yes. Ooh. Yeah, I could I could I could I can turn that right around too. And like, what's the Big Ten's too? What is the Big Ten's best win? Big Big Ten doesn't look great right now either. The mm -hmm. only Big Ten team that actually like looks impressive at the moment is Michigan, but Michigan's playing nobody. Yeah. Illinois didn't look good against Kansas this last week. Um, Wisconsin, Kansas is, by the way, not bad by Kansas standards this year. Yeah, Wisconsin looked all sort of out of place against Washington State. Yeah, Nebraska, uh, Nebraska just got embarrassed by Colorado. Uh, Kyle, Kyle, pause, pause. It's a really nice way of saying Wisconsin lost to Washington State. Wisconsin lost to Washington State. They lost. I was, I, Kyle, I was being told that Luke Fickle was going to turn around Wisconsin in one offseason. And I kept telling everyone, no, Wisconsin's in much more shape than that. I like Luke Fickle. I think Luke Fickle can fix Wisconsin. But Wisconsin's broken. Yeah, he wasn't going to fix it in one off season. I kept trying to tell people they wouldn't listen. Wisconsin's very, very broken right now. 
Big Ten's best Power Five conference win, Jared. Purdue okay. over Virginia Tech. And then is the that- next one, and then the next one is Rutgers over Temple. Oh, uh, glass houses, huh, man? Yeah. Glass Iowa houses. over Iowa State. Uh, that uh, glass houses yes all right um some other games here so tulane uh number 24 tulane lost to Ole miss don't let the final score tell you otherwise that was a close game up until just a few minutes left into the game yeah uh old miss kicked a it was a 56 i think yard field goal to basically moved the the score to 10, which essentially ended the game. Um, And then there was like a defensive touchdown on top of that. So as Kyle put the the, inside, like I want to say two minutes or maybe four minutes, it was a seven point football game. Uh, So don't let the 17 foot. Don't let that 17 point win distract you from reality. Tulane, Tulane score or yeah, Tulane kicked a field goal with, 256 left to make it 20 to 27. Yeah. And then Ole Miss turned around uh, to what, what happened was Tulane then kicked an onside kick, which went out of bounds, which, and then they put up a decent defensive stance mm-hmm. against Ole Miss, but because of the onside kick, you know, obviously gave Ole Miss great field position. And apparently they have an NFL kicker on Ole Miss's team. Hey, Ohio State, we stole everything else from Ole Miss. Why didn't we steal their kicker, too? Thanks for Iggy, by the way. Um, Why? Oh, yeah. So they just nail a field goal from 56 yards out. And that ended the game, essentially, because it was it did did. a minute 25 at that point. Was it 56? I can't read it. It was 56. Yep. 56. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it ends up looking like a 17 point game, but there, this was an onside kick away from it, from Tulane tying the game potentially, yep. or maybe going for two. Um, and then we, and then we mentioned Wisconsin, number 19, Wisconsin losing to Washington state. So those are your four top 25 losses for the, for the weekend. Yeah, and Tulane doesn't count as a collegiate chaos. I will be counting the rest of them. So uh, chaos reaping three souls this weekend. Um, North Carolina got out by the skin of their teeth. Appy State almost took them down. Mm -hmm. That's again, right? Didn't they? Was that? Yeah, they did. They did a few years ago. I forget how long it was, but yeah. Yeah, they they did. Um, Yeah, they have. Uh, mentioned Iowa barely beating Iowa State. Uh, now that it's that breaking low, up, Pac-12 is the be best it's been in game. years. Crazy, yeah. The Pac-12, the Pac-12 looks like a dominant football conference right now. Um, although it's being led by USC, which is of course one last hurrah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of one last hurrah, Utah. Uh, barely beats Baylor 20 to 13. They very struggling pretty bad without their, their star quarterback here. Yeah. um, They'll, I mean, you know, they still, they they beat, they beat Florida. (laughs) They did without their star quarterback. Um, But they would, would that be the pack? Would that be the pac 12's best out of conference win or would, or would beating Wisconsin Washington state beating Wisconsin. These are all these, both of these are better than anything the sec or the big 10 have. That's yeah, it's true. Um, or was it? Yeah, it was, it was 13 to six going into the fourth quarter. And then Utah gets two touchdowns, including uh, the game winning one with 17 seconds left in the game. Yep. Um, Coach Prime making Colorado at least interesting. Uh, we'll see how that continues to shake out during the course of the year. Um, Prime is talking a lot of shit. 
Um, which is fun when he's winning. We'll we'll see how that goes. It, college football is tough, man. College football is tough. I I don't. I don't that know might how be, smart that might it be is. The Pac-12's best win was Colorado over TCU. Uh, TCU is not good. I don't I don't care. I don't care where TCU lost all of their talent last year. I don't care where they were ranked in the preseason. I honestly don't care. There's not a good TCU team. It will continue to not be a good TCU team. They got devastated by the NFL or a graduation at the very least. Absolutely devastated. Um, and TCU does not recruit at a level that they can just plug in a bunch of new guys. This was always going to be a bad year for TCU. Uh, some other scores. TCU here, defense would... was horrible last year as well. You're not wrong, Woody. Uh, I think you briefly mentioned uh, Oregon uh, barely beats out Texas Tech. Uh, the score here was 38 to 30. It was not a great showing for Oregon. Or no. is Texas Tech maybe uh, decent? I don't know. We'll see. It's, it's, it's too early to, to say. watch. It. Bo Nix is fun to watch, though. Here is he's got big Penix energy. He does. The, those those two transfer quarterbacks up in the pack Northwest yeah, I mean, uh, share a Tech, lot in common. Texas Tech was up uh, 30 to 28 with five minutes left in the game. They sure were. Yep. Uh, the other interesting game I saw here that I posted was Oklahoma and SMU 28 to 11. Yeah. I don't, I don't buy I don't buy Oklahoma. I'm not buying Oklahoma. It's one of the reasons why I'm very high on Texas at the moment. Um, Texas has a uh, at least a very good defensive line. Um, at the very least, they have that. Uh, they have a, a good offensive line. They have Quinn Ewers, um, and I just don't know what Oklahoma has. I don't know what Oklahoma's identity is even right now. Um, they absolutely destroyed Arkansas State last week and then turned around and struggled bad against a very, very bad SMU team. Any of these other games worth talking about here, Jared? Uh, Penn Cincinnati State took care of business. Pittsburgh. Georgia took care of business. Michigan took care of business. Uh, yeah, Cincinnati 27 over Pittsburgh 21. Uh, Emory, jo uh, Emory, jo Emory Jones um, looked okay in this game. He had he had a pair of touchdowns in this game here. He Every time, and it's happened a lot, Kyle, every time that I learn... And this is like the 40th time I've learned this. Every time I, I, I learned that Emory Jones is in Cincinnati, I'm surprised. That, that, that fact just never sticks in my head for whatever reason. Yeah, well, that, it, be, just never, yeah be, it never holds on. Yeah, but yeah, it was a good win for the Bearcats. Yeah, absolutely here. It doesn't get any easier now that they're in the they're in the Big Twelve here. Um, well, they do they do play Miami of Ohio this weekend, and then they do have at home they they get to welcome in their first Big Twelve opponent in Oklahoma. Old Big East rivalry. Uh, no. Uh. Pittsburgh had left for the ACC before Cincinnati joined the Big East, unless mm. you're talking about a different game. Um, Cincinnati was barely in the Big East before it folded. Yeah. Cincinnati's a bit of a curse, if we're being honest. They join a conference and it folds. Which is yeah. better than it which is better than being Texas, because um same as UCF, yeah. Which better yeah. than being Texas, because Texas has single-handedly destroyed two conferences all by themselves. Like there, it wasn't just a funny causality. Uh, 
or excuse me, a funny correlation thing. Um, they're just responsible for the death of two conferences. And yes, the Big 12 is dead. It might be on life support at the moment. But this will all shake out. I, I'm going to say by 2032, there's just going to be two conferences. Yep. I'm putting I'm putting 2032 is the is the date on that. There will there will just be two conferences. All right, Jared. Uh, anything else uh, from any other games that you saw that was interesting? Wanted to talk about because next next week's not good. Next week's not a good week. <laughs> no, the the schedule's pretty sparse next week. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm just looking at some games here. Like, what are what are the interesting games? What 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 would be a fun game to watch? Oh, watch Northwestern and Duke, Jared. You, I, I don't you, Virginia you know Tech that used and Rutgers. To, you know what's funny is that like Duke and Northwestern. It, Duke and Northwestern, like that was such a mass math decathlon, uh, more of a journalism. Decathlon. No, that would be that's when no, that's Vanderbilt. Right. Isn't that when uh, Northwestern plays Vanderbilt? Because um, that, that's those are like two of the biggest, I want to say, j- journalism. What Duke, Duke is very. Kyle, you, you live there. Duke is very like science and engineering. Isn't that their big either a science yep. or applied science. Science, so what we, medical. What we really need is Purdue versus Duke, I, I think. I think is the ideal matchup there. Uh, let's see. Washington and Sparty. We're not, not going to talk about Sparty because we don't have enough time here, but uh, <laughs> Washington and Sparty. Keep it in your pants, kids. Tennessee and Florida play that um, this weekend here. Tennessee and Florida, man, there there were some people. No, the phone sex is allowed. Bulldoggy. Phone sex is allowed. Just, you know, consent, <laughs> consent, everybody. What is it with old men not understanding what consent means? <laughs> I don't know, but we're, we're we are we will not cover that, Jared, because we are we're about out of time here. So, but yeah, there's, Kyle, there's, why 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 do all the sex no other games? games. There, there, why do all the sex really schedules no happen games. in the Big Ten, Kyle? You know, I I had that exact thought this morning, and I'm like, you want to talk about is, glass houses? Yeah. But this is two now for Michigan State. This is this is now a double this dip sex now. scandal for Michigan State. This one significantly not as bad as the first. Yeah, significantly not as bad as the first. But yeah, um, the big Big Ten. The Big Ten is. Yeah, the Big Ten is not. Yeah, not 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 a good look for the Big Ten here. Not a good look. They don't all happen in the Big Ten. In the SEC, they just go unreported. I mean, I that's not a thing you can just say. Yeah. If you if you have if you have numbers, if you have uh examples, I, I will I will look at them, but that's not that's not a thing you can just like just say, especially when it comes to serious shit. Because let's whether it be the Ohio State wrestling doctor or the uh Penn State defensive coordinator or um the michigan state gymnastics doctor uh those were also unreported for a very long time Th- those were also unreported for a very very long time those were all swept under the rug and kept a secret for a very very long time so it's not like everything's open air and and reported and taken care of in the big 10 and not in the, in the, and it's everything gets swept away in the sec. Those things were also swept away in the big 10. It's just that eventually someone looks under the rugs. Anything else, Jerry? Anything else? Um, (laughs) 
now. Um, I, I'll, I'll ask this, and this is this is for everybody. This is for everybody. Um, thoughts on Colorado? Thoughts on Coach Prime? Are we taking this seriously? Does this feel like, you know, Nebraska's not very good. They got a new head coach. Uh, TCU lost all their talent. Um, does does this feel like next Alabama coach? I, I it, here's the thing. No, no. Um, I'll tell I'll tell you who Coach Prime is perfect for. Colorado. No, because Saban is going to be there for 10 more years. Remember? Yeah, I know you think that. I, I also know that um, it's not true. Um, <laughs> who Coach Prime is perfect for is a university without an identity. I'm not a university, a, a football program. Well, without an identity, um, who's struggling to be noticed in the modern football landscape, a team that's just sort of lost and is getting no attention. And because they get no attention, they get no recruits. Not Alabama. Yep. It's a team that is, who's not just struggling, but is also struggling from a brand perspective. That's who, Co that's who coach prime is, is needed for. But to answer your question here, yeah, it raises it raises an eyebrow for me. I'm like, okay, let, let's see if they can continue this train. I, they're not going to – shouldn't have much comp, um, issues with Colorado State this weekend. But then that's all going to change there because they got back-to-back -back weeks against Oregon and USC. Then, yeah. we will, then we will find out who this Colorado team really is. Looking for a scandal being brought forth against Dumbo Fisker. I mean, he's got a huge buyout, so a scandal might be a... They might need to find something. Um, an interesting story because he basically started from scratch and have a functional offense and defense. That's not easy to do. The problem is, is that he stole a bunch of kids' scholarships in order to do that. Coach Prime... Forced a bunch of dudes into the transfer portal late into the process, making it hard for them to find new places, leaving them without scholarships, leaving them without the education that they earned. And my fear is, is that if Coach Prime does this and he is successful, then he's going to lay out a map for a bunch of other coaches to go in there and do the same thing. And it's not going to work for those other coaches because they aren't, they aren't Deion Sanders. They don't have that swagger, that cachet, that it that Deion Sanders has that just attracts attention and attracts players to him. So you're going to have these other coaches. They're going to try and replicate that. They're going to cut a bunch of the kids they're all going to get lost in the transfer portal. And then they're going to turn around and not be able to just bring in a bunch of great talent because they aren't Deion Sanders. Yeah, that part was pretty shitty. You you don't bring in 80 new players without getting rid of 80 old players. <laughs> Whatever the number is, I think it's like 60, 65. Not, I don't think it's 80, but you, you catch my drift. That, that, I think that's my biggest fear is that already there are coaches looking at what's happening in Colorado right now and just assuming that they can do the same thing and a bunch of kids are going to lose their scholarships along the way until coaches realize that because they aren't Deion Sanders that they can't replicate it. Mm -hmm. And it's just going to, like I said, cost a lot of kids scholarships that they earned. And uh, it's the part of college football that's becoming more common that I hate. Um, you know, that, that and Mel Tucker, <laughs> Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? 
Um, this was a house that with, uh, I should have mentioned, I should have swapped what I said before to this one here, but going back to Ohio State here, the interception from Denzel Burke sure. was the first from a cornerback at Ohio State since October 30th of 21 against Penn State. That's a drought. That was a big drought. Not as big as some droughts, though, Kyle. And with that, we're moving on. <laughs> Low blow. Kyle, for anyone who's new here, Kyle is desperate for Ohio State to break the punt return drought, which uh, is very old at this point. All right. Um, that's it. That's the end of today's show. Everyone come join the Discord server. Uh, we have the new uh, Sloop Economy bot, which uh, is fun. You can earn coins simply by existing, and they're all fake coins. Just, just so we're here, just so we're all on the same page here. It's not. There's no actual financial anything involved here. All right. There, there's the coins are fake. Um, but the coins are real to us. Damn it. Um. You can earn coins in the Discord server simply by talking and reacting and uh, interacting with people in the Discord server, by sharing links, by talking to people, replying to people. Um, there, there's, all, there's a roulette machine. I didn't know that one was coming. That one was a surprise to me, but there's a roulette machine uh, where you can gamble those. And also, uh, we, we do a lot of uh, sports wagers in the uh wagers channel of the discord server so you earn the coins by existing in the discord server um and then you can gamble them there'll be there's a store coming too you'll be able to uh quote unquote buy stuff um again they're not real items and it's not real money but you'll be able to buy stuff um that's a thing that's coming along uh as well and everyone's having a lot of fun with it it's we're getting all the joys of of sports gambling uh, without any of the, oh my God, how am I going to pay the mortgage this year? So it's, it's a really fun trade-off. It's, 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 it's like, it's like sports gambling, um, but it's just for bragging rights. So, you know, everyone still pays their mortgage at the end of the day. Makes the social screens even more fun. Yeah, that's true. Because like when I know there's a social screen in, I'll start throwing in prop bets for the social screen game. Social screen, by the way, um, every weekend we pick a time slot. This week we all got together in the Discord server and we watched Alabama and Texas. So a bunch of us uh, from the Discord server just watched the game together right there in the Discord server. Um, is that legal? Probably not. Fuck it. Um, <laughs> it's all good um, until it's not. But yeah, that's uh, we have a lot of fun in the Discord server. You can come join our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, you do get access to more stuff in the Discord server. Um, if you are a Patreon supporter, patreon.thesloopcast.com. But um, the server is free. It's totally free. Not totally free. There, there are exclusive channels, but it's like 90% free. You can, for example, watch games with us for free. But if you're a Patreon person, then you have voice privileges during the social screen. But everyone can watch. Everyone can watch along and listen along as we as we talk and, and whatnot. But um, and the economy bot with the sports, with the pretend sports gambling is is also just free. That's there, there's just like there's like a, a chat channel and a recruiting channel that's behind the paywall. And that's mostly it, if I'm being honest. Um, so yeah, come join our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Um, Kyle, I already asked you for Kyle's Corner. We already did that. Tonight's ending music will be Parade Rainer. They, they are a punk band out of Columbus, Ohio. Uh, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Parade Rainer. <laughs>